Hello everybody, welcome to today's episode of Downstream Outdoors. Today on Downstream Outdoors, we're going to start off with our weekly feature of how to support us. And no matter how you find us, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, like, share, comment. Like, share, and comment, we love the support that uh, that offers to us, and we love to interact with the people who watch the show. You can also look for one of our, our several Downstream Outdoor products. This week's featured product is our downstream, uh, our beach corner brand of lip balms. We have them in four flavors, original with no added flavor, tangerine, lemongrass, and vanilla. There's no artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives in any of our products. These products are available at places like Little Rock's Natural Remedies along Route 36 in McKee or at Saxton Outdoor Supply along Route 26 in Saxton. Or by contacting us um, via email at downstreamoutdoors814 at gmail.com. Without much further ado, this week's episode, we're back with Craig Strzok from Aquatic Imitations. Um, this week, Craig is going to continue the fly tying. I promise the camera angles are better on this one, and they're just going to keep getting better. Um, this week, Craig is tying a Graham Caddis Soft Hackle. And it is a piece of artwork. So I'll let Craig do the rest. Well, hello again. This is Craig Strock from Aquatic Imitations. Today we're going to tie a Granum Caddis Soft Hackle. Now, the Granum Caddis will be probably the first major hatch that we see in the season, normally somewhere around the first to second week of October. It is a very, very prolific hatch on the little J. Um, the fish literally boils, I mean, makes the water boil with them taking Granus, cat, uh, Granus Caddis, Granum Caddis patterns. Today the materials that we're going to be using to tie the Granum Caddis soft tackle is hairy ice dub in black, black thread, a size 14 1x long hook, whether it's a Daiki, Dairichi, Tiemco, Gamatsu, Mustad, whatever hook style you prefer. Dubbing wax for dubbing, a soft hackle, whether it be grouse, woodcock, this happens to be a grouse that I'm using for the soft hackle on it, and the underwing is going to be what I refer to, it can be poly, this happens to be Congo hair. I like using the Congo hair better than poly. We carry it here at Aquatic Imitations. It's easier to work with, it's more water repellent, and I just like the way it looks on the finished fly. So saying that, we're going to get started and we're going to put this random caddis together. Uh, come along with me and you can follow me through the process. Now we're going to tie the Granum Caddis. Um, very prolific hatch, very, very productive. I've put in a size 14 1X long hook into the vise. We're going to take our Ultra 70 black thread. Once again, we're going to start right behind the eye of the hook and wind a thread base across the shank of the hook the whole way back to pass the barb to just where the hook starts to bend. Right to there. Now we're going to take our scissors, we're going to cut off our thread tag. Now this is an important step. In doing this, to get this dubbing to adhere to the thread correctly, as you can see, I'm using my dubbing wax. I've waxed the thread. I always take my fingers and run the last thing up and down to take any stray portions of wax off the thread. Now dubbing, all you need to do is take a small piece and you want to create what they refer to as a dubbing needle. Noodle. 
which is a very, very thin line of dubbing on your thread. Once you put it on there, use your finger and your thumb, twist it very tightly. The tighter you get it, the better off you are. I twist it until it actually becomes part of the thread itself. To have a correct dubbing noodle, it should be uniformly thickness the whole way down your thread. You don't want humps or gaps. So now I'm happy with that stretch of dubbing I have on there. I'm going to start right at the top where I stop the thread base and start my dubbing and winding forward. I want to create a fairly thick body. Caddises are chunky. So I want to create a fairly thick body the whole way up till about two hook eye lengths back from the actual hook eye. Now as you can see I'm going to have to add some more dubbing to my thread. I've got a good chunk of it, but I need a little more. Once again, try to get your dubbing as uniform as possible on your thread. And just keep going up. And I stopped about two hook eyes behind the actual eye of the hook. This is where I'm going to tie my wing in. So, take a look. Chunky body the way it should be. Take a small piece of this dun colored light gray, medium gray. In the fly tying world, we refer to it as a dun. Cut a small piece off. We're going to take it and lay it right on top of the hook. Take one, two, three turns of tight thread and you're going to take your scissors and cut it off right at the back of the body straight cut straight across that gives you your under wing so to speak your excess in the front once again at an angle wind up underneath above the hook eye and cut it off get rid of your excess now we're going to tie in our soft tackle. This is for, this creates the wing, what looks like the legs on the insect. I pulled out one feather. I'm going to take it and strip all the fuzzy after shafts off the shaft because you're not going to use it. It should basically look like that what you want to do is measure. You want these fibers on this feather. If you look at it from the eye of the hook and measure from behind the eye, they should protrude when you're done to right past the end of your hook. That is the proper length for this. So now I lay the feather with the shaft right on top. Take the thread over top, the feather shaft in a figure eight. I've done two turns this way, I now come behind the feather and do two turns across the shaft of the feather and that securely holds the feather in place. Lift up your excess feather shaft, take your scissor tips and clip it off. Now use your hackle pliers. These are non-skid hackle pliers. Lift your feather up and go right to the tip and just clip it and hold the tip. Now this is very, very delicate, so be very gentle, but you take one, two, and as you can see with each turn of the hackle, I am smoothing the hackle towards the back. And I've done three turns of hackle. 
Now holding this, reach around, grab your thread and come in over top your hackle tip with your hackle pliers holding it. Take one. I can release that because I've got the thread tight and it's holding it in place. Two, three, three turns of thread over top. Take your fingertips, pull everything back toward the rear of the hook. Take three more turns of thread. Now, as you can see, the hackle is laying back the way it should be. I've got a couple of stragglers sitting out here in front. I'll trim those away with the scissor tips and this hackle tip the same. So I'll reach in, snip off the hackle tips. Here's where having a rotary vise is nice. I can turn the vise this way, clean out the stragglers that I have that aren't laying back where I want it. Now I take my fingertips and my thumb and I smooth everything back to the rear. I'll take three or four turns of thread to create the head. Once again with our whip finish tool. Once again. Hold your thread with the front hook. Go behind the loop on the tool. Bring it up and create a figure four or a sailboat mast as I call it with your thread and then pull the thread down to on top your hook eye take one two three four five five turns of thread lift your tool up to loosen the loop and pull your thread tight have your finished head on your fly. Now as you can see I've got two pieces of hackle that are sticking out at an odd angle. I don't like that so I'll go in with my scissor tips, cut them out, clean it up a little bit. The fly not only has to be able to catch fish it has to look good too. It's called pride and workmanship. And that is a good looking Granum Caddis. Well, everybody, that was it. That was awesome. I love watching Craig do this. Um, it's amazing. I was there, you know, when I was shooting all this stuff with Craig, and obviously I watched him while he was working and whatnot. It's amazing for me to sit back and watch the, the video footage of it, and I truly get to appreciate the, the artistry that goes into it whenever uh, he's tying these flies, and I get to sit back and watch it over and over again. Um, to be honest, this, you know, this hatch he's talking about down on the Little J kind of has me excited. I might have to try to slip out with Craig for a little bit of fly fishing whenever that hatch comes on on the Little J. But that's down the road. So until next time, keep your line wet and out of the trees.